Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Apocalypse Soon, Park Edition. I'm here with your host. Make it loud for him. It's Eddie Pepperdine. Hey, how you doing? We're here on a beautiful day here in Flatbush, Brooklyn. As you can see, Brooklyn has uh, really gotten pretty. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're here in L.A. I'm Eddie Pepperdine now. I know a lot of you think I'm doing a character right now as the New York guy, but what happened is that this is a side effect of the, va- of the vaccine booster. As most of you know, I'm a senior, and uh, I had to get the booster recently. I was wheeled over. I, by the way, I only travel by wheelbarrow now. I am wheeled by people who love me. I mean, it could be a family member. It, it could be, you know, the, the grocery store clerk <laughs> or Clark. They say Clark in England, the grocery store Clark. But anyway, hey, so uh, it's good <laughs> to be back, everybody. That was the opening salvo. That was pretty funny. There. I like that. I like that a lot. I, I, I love over overdone New York accents. Me too. Like, oh, gee, come on, yeah. Wally. Yeah, yeah. Let's go down in the docks. Like that, yeah, like yeah. overly yeah. done. Let I, me tell you something. <laughs> Brando did the quintessential one in On the Waterfront. Let me tell you something, Bobby. I could have been somebody. <laughs> I could have been somebody. You know, the uh, On the somebody. Waterfront guy. Ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah, so hi, folks. I've been away for... Three weeks, I was just telling Kevin, we haven't done one of these together in like three weeks. And the yeah. reason why we're in the park, which is fine and fun. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, as the sun descends on as North it's Hollywood. Descending, it's finally cool in this, <laughs> in the valley, the shithole valley. I <laughs> And I know a lot of people love the L.A. Valley, but uh, mm. that was before, I think, climate breakdown. Yeah, when all the murders when the, <laughs> don't get me started on the murders, which, you know, by the way, does anybody have these apps like uh, neighbor? What is it called? Neighborhood? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got the, uh, I think it is neighborhood. Yeah. Well, I think it's called neighborhood. And it's people all from the neighborhood who, who talk to each other on this. Yeah. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, you know, and uh, it's just one all I ever and I and I deleted the app because I didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to read that stuff anymore. But what happens is I can't stop getting their emails. Dude, I get I have the <laughs> same problem. But mm-hmm. and it's always the same lady. It's like that, that pile of trash I told you about three weeks ago. No, it's still there. In this one, and and what goes on around here is, uh, you know, they're always complaining about a man is in my yard. A man is in my yard. A man is on my balcony. A man is making a call from within the house. No, I mean, it's just basically here it's complaining about all these people who who are homeless. And, uh, you know, it's really, uh uh-oh, that is a nice military. Thank you, boy. Thank you for your service, gentlemen. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I love it. it, it, We have a nice cross-section of the world here. We have the, oh, the military yeah. vehicles, the animals, the children. It's beautiful. Well, let me just address my audience. I feel like I haven't addressed them uh, in person. Thank you. We are all going to die violent death soon. And uh, just, you know, I think every everything should be renamed, whether it's a cookie or a shopping center. It should be called Get Your Affairs in Order. That's that's the <laughs> only name yeah. any product should have. Hello. Hello. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Sorry, I, I did the same thing. And you know, the only way we're going to sell that idea is to have like someone like Danny DeVito, that three foot freak, <laughs> four foot. Maybe he's four foot. He might be four. But I just saw him doing another shill campaign for jersey mike's subway oh, oh yeah you gotta you know, and he's just like you know lapping up that corporate money oh yeah fucking get a sandwich i can't do a good <laughs> i can't i can't do a good devito he's uh, good yeah he's real good do you watch ever watch it's always sunny yes yes i i i i was in an episode and i were you really and I, he was in it and we got to uh you know act together a little 
That's great. And, uh, yeah, he was super nice. I'm just saying this. I just don't understand guys like him who are, you know, people love him, right? Yeah. And they're doing Jersey Mike commercials. It is. It's just so lame, man. Fuck them all. Who knows? I mean. I just want. I just want these fuckers. And they're cool. John Hamm. Silverman, you know, you know, you are you are duly noted that you know you're shilling for these pieces yeah. of shit. Duly noted. That's all we see you. <laughs> Absolutely, but you, that and that I think is where like then you start seeing some of the mm-hmm. the stuff uh, like some of the preaching that'll happen on on Twitter, and you're like, you just right. You're, Right. Well, you that's just did my... that Exxon Mobil yes. commercial. What are <laughs> yes. you talking about? Yes, exactly. Well, that's my problem with the hypocrisy of it. Yeah. It's like, yes, um, I will be the face of corporate yeah. shit, but then I'm going to get on Twitter and say, "Oh, this corporate shit isn't right." Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, I. Always... And that's the problem. That's the problem with the whole society. And I, you know, that's why I always represent my favorite banks and tobacco companies. On, on <laughs> yes, Twitter. let me talk to the children for a Thank second. You. If you're a child and you get approached by a corporation wanting to get you in an ad, make sure you get your money up front. Don't let them back end you on mm. any of this. Get your. This is my message to children: get your money up front. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they will try to back end you too. Mm-hmm. They'll try to back into you big time mm-hmm. uh, on these things if yeah. it gets bought out. If then you're lucky, and maybe we'll give you if another. If you're lucky, bucks. they'll back in you. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, sunset here. It is in North Hollywood. It's always good to be back. You know. So you got, yeah, go ahead. You how long were you gone? Uh, close to three weeks. Three weeks, and then the first two days I get back, folks, just to show you what kind of entertainment showbiz warrior I am. Mm-hmm. The first two days back, I had an indie film shoot for a horror comedy. And, uh, you know, a couple of 13-hour days as soon as I got back. And I've been a vegetable yesterday. And Kevin texted me yesterday, hey, where's what are we going to do this week? And I was like, fuck you, man. (laughs) Fuck you, dude. I totally get it too, because yeah, because I we, we were both talking about it. Just like there's some weeks where it's just like you're like, if they don't ask for it, <laughs> you know, maybe not gonna. I usually it, give blood on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know there were a lot of accidents. <laughs> Nobody said anything. Nobody said nothing. And again, let me talk to the kids. Mm. Hey, go in your parents' wallets, and remember that soupy sales. Old time, I don't know. He was he was one of the first TV personalities as far as yeah. like kids shows, and he was also pretty funny. Soupy sales. He on an episode told kids to go into their parents, and I think he got in a lot of trouble. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great though. because just, I think they did. You it's know? just marketing, though. You know what? It's just marketing. All those '80s kids shows were all mm-hmm. designed for mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. that. You know, go in your parents, tell them you got to get the next He-Man action figure. You know, you got to get it. Hey, and this goes out to the children again. Just really take care of your finances. You, you're you going to have more money than your parents very yeah. shortly. Yeah, seriously. But hey, so also, Kev, we were talking about uh, what it is to be a good stand-up comedian. Oh, yeah. I think this is of interest to anybody trying to do anything in life which is um you have to be able to tell your truth which means you can't censor yourself and that's yes. such a big job you know that's such a big job as the artist hi how are you guys hey that's such a big job as an artist to not censor yourself, to not hide, not hide behind a mask or two or yeah. three, and be like, "Oh, I can't hurt you know the ones I love, this and that." But you have to kind of speak your truth. I don't yeah. know if that's if I preface this enough. If people think I'm crazy, no, I agree. I mean, I I have found that to be true. I mean, I moved. Mm-hmm. I. I really wanted to get out of my hometown 
so that I could be free of that potential judgment. You know what I mean? Like to um, do to get out to where there was kind of underneath, even if it was only in my own head, to be mm-hmm. like, I can say whatever I want because I'm I'm you know, I'm out here. You yeah. Know? yeah. And then uh, I, I don't know, man. I think at some point you just have to kind of own yourself. And that means the good and the bad. And and I think what happens is that we think, oh, because I have these, you know, th- because I have these thoughts, these feelings inside me, I'm a bad person. No. Yeah. No, it's like we we are good. We're bad. And we, we can't be... Um, I don't know. We have to just be kind, right, to ourselves so we can make the best art. Yeah, absolutely. Because judgment of yourself gets in the way so much, mm-hmm. you know, for you at least, not for me. Uh, I never judge myself. Uh, I, I know that <laughs> do you, I, I get my own self-judgment gets in the way a lot. Do you find that for of yourself? doing stand-up? Yeah. It used to much more, you know. Yeah. And now with the help of Benadryl. Mm. And Benadryl, folks, it's not just for unleashing your inner truth your deep truth it's it's for other things too like tossing off a balcony and maybe (laughs) taking someone's eye out (laughs) it's a good defensive thing from a balcony benadryl yeah by the way i have an announcement i uh i wait wait for it go ahead i've been prescribed wellbutrin it's it's (laughs) it's officially happened now i hope when you go back and edit this (laughs) there will be I think you had enough of a pause there where you could put some music in. Yeah. Uh, I have an announcement. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah. No, and but it would be funny if we put in, 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 in something like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the bowels of Kevin Tinkins' reality, we have an announcement. So, well, Butrin. Uh, huh? oh, I'm, I'm excited. So I start tomorrow. So we'll see. Ooh, okay. Well, let me tell you, because I've been on and off these antidepressants, you know. And by the way, if you're looking for an antidepressant, and let me talk to the children here. Mm, thank you. You want child Zoloft. Child Zoloft is gentle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, child, child Zoloft is gentle. And it's made for you, mm. the toddler. Oh, did I say toddler? Yeah. <laughs> hey, give me 20 bucks for a toddler. I, give me 20 bucks for a jam. Give me 20 bucks for a toddler. I know where the heck I am. <laughs> I know where the fuck I am. Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to Apocalypse Soon, the podcast with no upside. That's right, we got no upside. Eh, luckily we got a backside, eh? Hey! <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> I love that voice. See, that's Bobby. We're yeah. getting on Bobby oh, right yeah. there. Hey, let me tell you something. Papatone, hey. <laughs> chicken salad, and Papa Tapuli. Uh, I love doing old man voice, just like yeah. Peter. Oh, my God. You, you'd never believe it. You, you'd have seen, if you'd have seen Lucille Ball's legs in 1956... <laughs> You'd have blown your jeans off right oh, there. Oh, let the me market. tell you something about <laughs> those gams. Yay, 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 yay. Oh, you know, on, on Christmas I have yams, but then I see Lucy's gams. <laughs> and, and the Ricky Ricardo comes in, does he, and as he starts, he starts playing the bongos on her butt cheeks. It's a <laughs> crazy night. Crazy, crazy night. Um, man, I got some serious. What What about traveling makes your skin go dry? Oh, I have, is yeah. it? What I is that? Shit? The recirculated air of an airplane, <gasps> oh, I think, has fuck. something to do with it. Mm. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Plus, if you do too many East Coast accents, your skin starts getting really dry. You have to be careful. Oh, okay. <laughs> You keep zoning out. I'm like, Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I've had a, a three weeks of, you know, busy, busy, busy. And I'll tell you, um, one thing about being busy, right, Kev, is that it's nice when you get a couple of days to just yes, decompress a little bit. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, here we are. But, you know, at light, every day, if you are a serious person... Every day is full of all kinds of commitments, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. It just is. It's like, you know, you make commitments to yourself, you make commitments to others, and you just have to do that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I got to take my kids to school every day. You know, hey, I gotta, hey, uh, hey, we all got our problems there. I got to feed my kids every day. That's a lot. That is... I can't believe that you do that, dude. I gotta, I gotta make sure my wife's happy every day. You know, that's, that's a big one. Oof. That's hard. It's yep. getting, it's getting dark out here. I can see we're dimming. Oh yeah. Uh, what should we do? I don't know. How I much think, have we done? I think it just is what it is. You know, there. Yeah, well, I'll, 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 I'll try to bump it up a little bit. All right. I do have a little, a uh, little light we could throw on there. Throw on a light. Let's for just a throw, bit. throw on a little light. You want me to keep them busy? Yeah, keep them busy. All right, I'm keeping you busy. Hey, folks. Let me do, uh, I'm going to do an Alan Margaret. All right, here we go. We're going to do an Alan Margaret. Ready, everybody? And now, for another episode of Alan Margaret, the couple who live inside Eddie Pepitone's head. I... <laughs> hey, Al, wake up. You're laughing in your sleep. Oh, Ma Margaret, why did you wake me like that? I was having this funny dream that I had a podcast somewhere in a park and the light was going down. Oh, wow. That's actually what's going on. What? Nothing. Nothing, Al. Hey, Al. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> it, would it help if I say no, Margaret? All right. Let me ask you this. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you love me? Ah, uh, come on, Margaret. Why do you wake up with these insecurities? I don't know, Al. Maybe it's because I finally want to learn how to make corned beef hash. Now, I hope you're going to make corned beef hash. I hope you're going to make corn. What are you laughing at, Margaret? Oh, Al, I... I just felt pretty good about life yeah, for a second. I'm sorry I laughed, Al. I'm sorry I showed some joy. Margaret, I'm not jumping on you like that. I I just want to say, I, uh, you know, I liked it when you laughed. Well, then say that and don't, don't say that. Oh, Margaret. Margaret, did you take your Wellbutrin? Oh, I start tomorrow. Okay. Maggie... Can, you mind if I call you, Maggie? You can call me anything, but don't call me late for my Wellbutrin. All right, look, Margaret, let's stop about your Wellbutrin. Why? I'm not stopping. I'm starting tomorrow. And let me tell you something. I'm pretty sure that finally I'm going to hit it off with Big Pharma. What are you talking about? Well, I've been taking antidepressants. I, I've, <laughs> I've, Margaret, what are you laughing at? I told you, Al, I am laughing at incredible joy that is that is just coursing through my soul. Margaret, let me tell you something. I have a good mind to put you in an airplane and take you to Washington, D.C. and leave you in front of the Smithsonian. Why, Al? Why such a specific place? I don't know. It sounded good at the time. Look, Al, we have to stop fighting, Okay. We can't fight like this. I love you. You love me. I love you and you love... <coughs> Margaret, let me say something just to the children. Children, start your Wellbutrin tomorrow. Just start it tomorrow. A lot of people I love are starting their Wellbutrin tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Al, let's just face it. Being a voice in Eddie Pepitone's head ain't so bad. Come here, you little minx. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Checking In with Al and Margaret, a couple living inside Eddie Pepitone's head. That felt pretty good. That's great. I love Al and Margaret. Yeah. I love that they always end up getting together at the end. You know? They love each other. Yeah, it's beautiful. They're, they're you know, the feuding... Whatever's, you know. Where I mean, somebody on on uh, YouTube recently was like, "Those are definitely Eddie. That's definitely Eddie's parents." And I was like, "Oh, did someone say that?" Yeah, yeah. It was on one of the one of the videos. A little bit, I guess. Yeah. Is your was your mom the high pitched sweet? Like, yeah, yeah. And your dad was like, "What's going on, Margaret?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. That's Where's the scissors? <laughs> Where are the fucking scissors? <laughs>
<laughs> that would be a funny name for, you know, an old-timey radio show. Welcome to another episode of Where Are the Scissors, starring Rex Hamilton. Let's do an episode of that now, okay? I'll be the wife, you be okay, the guy. Okay. And now another episode of Where Are the Scissors. God damn it. What? Where are the fucking scissors? Oh, oh, hold on, Ted. Let me see where the... Let me see. Uh, you always fucking do this. We put stuff away, and then fucking the scissors were supposed to be right here. They're always right here. Uh, They're always right please, next to the forks. Please, please. I'm, I just started Wellbutrin yesterday, and I'm just <laughs> feeling a little off. Look, I don't give a fuck about your medication, sweetie. I've told you this before. I want to know where the goddamn scissors are. They're always right here you're, next to the pens. You're always asking me about the scissors, Ned. Well, I'm trying to cut stuff. <laughs> I keep trying to cut everything, and here I am with no cutting utensils. Remember, Ned, don't ever run with these things. Oh, you found the scissors. Here they are, but I, I'm scared that you'll run with them. You know I love running. I love scissors, and I love... To be continued, where are the scissors? <laughs> now, that is a good sitcom. Now that's solid. That's like a... That is also like a very... Um, what do you call it? Like trope, I guess, yeah, uh, yeah. of comedy to, to be like... To make something really small, huge, like yes. where are the scissors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what, yeah, that's what happened in my family growing up. Where you know? are my fucking braces? My dad was so melodramatic because of yeah. his Sicilian operatic heritage. Really? Yeah. Is is is, is Sicilian operatic a heritage? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, the, the Italians in general. But I don't know if Sicilians have more of a reputation for being more operatic but anyway my dad was into opera and i listened to opera yeah. because of him and yeah it's just over the top melodrama and that's what my dad was kind of like you know yeah 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 like everything he, he's you know well, if he's, my parents if they're in a bad mood i mean i'm the, the same what? way if i'm in a bad mood the smallest it's usually the small shit that'll you know set me oh off like, yeah make oh yeah some, gosh like dude before i came over here i couldn't find one of the sd cards I'm losing. My, I'm sweating. I'm in my house. I'm like sweating. Well, we could always buy going, one of those. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Hey, yeah. let me tell you something. We don't spare any expense here at Apocalypse. No soon. expense. Also, become a Patreon member, right? <sighs> Praise the Lord, Eddie. Praise Let's, the why, Lord. Why don't, why don't you tell them how they can be? Go to Patreon.com/slash Eddie Peppet Podcast, uh, or you know, just search Eddie Peppet's mm -hmm. own Patreon. We're out there. We got yeah. we got now two full uh, sets on there uh, from Eddie on the Road. Oh yeah, and, that's uh, right. Yeah, that's right. Stickers and uh, and from comedy store as well. I, yeah, yeah. I, I put up. We put one up. Yeah, and there's more to come. I I uh, I just found a really good like three minute clip that I did uh, recently yeah. on the road, and it's anyway. Anyway, send it, send it to me. So I'll anyway, put it up. don't force me into the arms. Of the oil industry, because <laughs> because if you do by not becoming a Patreon and you force me into the arms of the oil industry, oh, yeah. because they come up to me and they're trying to shut me up in there, you know, let's say the Exxon guy, he comes up to me like they do at you. You're at a Panda Express, let's <laughs> say, you know where you know, and you know I go through so many airports and sometimes I'm so tired oh, yeah. that I actually will look at a Panda <laughs> Express and think it's a good idea. Oh, it's tasty. You get you get that orange. It chicken. may be tasty going down, but it coming out, it's not as tasty. It's rough, especially if you get the spicy. Stuff. Yeah, it's not that good. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, let, let's do a uh, driving in the rain. Let's do it, right? right? I, I, <laughs> Folks, we're just trying to give you a podcast. Kevin has a show, a stand-up show. Where yes. have you been performing around, Kev? We'll go into driving in the rain in a second. But where um, have you been performing around, and uh, what you do? You're you're coming to New York. By the way, Apocalypse Soon coming to the New York Comedy Festival November 12th. Yes. Kevin will be there. Joe List is our guest. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I like Joe List. Joe List, New York City Comedy Festival, November 12th. Go to the website, and uh, it'll say where I am. My website, eddiepepitone.com. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. In Manhattan somewhere. But. Yeah, go subscribe to the uh, the YouTube, too, because we got a lot of a lot of great stuff on there. But People yeah, are I've... subscribing pretty regularly yeah oh yeah like we're it's getting ready. building but it's got to build way more 
Got to build way more. It's Spread just, the word about this podcast. There's so you know? much good stuff on there. I, 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 I'm, I'm happy with the empire we're building here, Eddie. It's yes, slowly brick by brick, <laughs> guided meditation. It may end tonight. It's pretty damn dark. <laughs> well, it's, this, I just looked around. The light is so bright too that I keep. It's good though, right? It's great. I think it's it'll be good for the viewing. But also, I feel like there could be a whole crowd of oh, people yeah. right behind the camera, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. wouldn't know. Yeah, because of the uh, yeah, it is dark. <laughs> but anyway, that's good. I, I tell you, these outdoor podcasts have been fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's a, it's a, we get to be on edge a little bit, you know, kind of uh, surviving the elements. Uh, but uh, yeah, you want to do a, a little uh, driving driving in the, rain? In the rain? Yeah, let's do driving in the rain. And now, driving in the rain, Bloody Pepitone. I got out of the shower, and let me tell you something. I love the shower because it reminded me of the rain. It was the only object in my house that I could make into the rain. Like, I could feel like I was in rain because I'm so used to driving in the rain. So I got out of the shower. I put on my clothes. I grabbed half a Danish, and I hit the road, and wouldn't you know it, it was raining like a son of a bitch. And I'm talking about like a son of a bitch who doesn't pay the bills. A son of a bitch who would leave his dog in an apartment for days. A son of a, a, son of a bitch who would cheat on his significant other. A son of a bitch who would go into a butterfly museum and just take out his cock and piss on all the butterflies. A son of a bitch of a guy who would see people zip lining through the Amazon rainforest between the trees on a zip line cord and he would cut it and laugh and then watch Laurel and Hardy I mean that kind of son of a bitch was the way the rain was coming down I put the car in drive and I started toward her yeah, the rain was coming down, but I knew I was going to get a little sweetness, as they say, downtown. A little sugar. So I'm driving, I'm thinking of her. She's got a very brown complexion. And also unlimited credit with Goldman Sachs. And the rain started coming down even harder. The rain was pounding on my windshield and it felt like it was mirroring, and you try saying that, mirroring the heartbeat that I felt pounding in my chest. My heart and the rain were one pounding and pounding. I lit a cigarette in the car, the ash went onto my lap, burned a hole in my jeans and singed the outer layer of my epidermal leg and it felt good it felt like i was alive whenever i feel a cigarette burn i'm like i don't care how hard it how hard it's raining and it was raining hard wow and then i pulled up and i saw my sugar standing outside our little garden apartment right on the lake and I said baby how'd you like to go skinny dipping in this rain and I didn't know it she was bleeding from the gut she had been gutted I said baby what happened and as she fell over into the lake becoming the bloody lady on the lake I looked over and realized I should have started my Wellbutrin sooner. Thanks for joining us on another uh, titillating episode of Driving in the Rain with Eddie Pepitone. <laughs> Tell me uh, when you got to go. Oh, I think, well, we're, I mean, we got another. You think another, we're good? Oh, no, we got another 15, probably another fit, fit, 15 minutes. Okay, let's go. Of, uh, of, of pure gold. <laughs> of pure gold, the the goose. Yeah, we're laying them. Was there any um, uh, leftover bits from all the shit I sent? Did uh, you use everything? I did use everything. Okay, I'm pretty sure I used everything. Mm-hmm. I, uh, 
I was riffing them off from that Jeez. Vegas hotel room. I was like, you, you know what it. seemed funny was the Caligula. Yes, the Caligula. Did you like that one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that was Caligula having regrets, like what it's like to be just like, you know, someone who's so out of control <laughs> and full of power and so no retribution, yeah. which is. Well, I had know. to look up the story of Caligula, too. because Oh, was you like, did? I was like, I. I've heard it as a reference enough. I know mm-hmm. I know vague mm-hmm. amounts of it, mm-hmm. uh, but I looked it up and I was like, "Oh, that's even better." Because then I I made sure. I, then I went back and listened. I'm like, "This is fantastic." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, man, maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> hey, let's do a guided meditation. Yeah, let's do it. Let's right. do it. Here we go. And now, take it easy with guided meditation with Eddie Pepitone. Hi, everybody. Oh, I feel your tension. And what I want you to do with that tension is pretend or shake it out. Shake out your tension, or or better yet, what I like to do with tension, which is pretend it's not there. Be the master of your own destiny in light-fitting clothing with my three-point program. But I'll get to that later. Let's... Let's do a meditation. Here we go. Roll your shoulders. You know how you used to roll a joint? Roll your shoulders. Kind of like that. Just roll your shoulders. Let all the tension from your shoulders go into your feet. No, I'm kidding. Just let it all go out. Let it all go out because this world and this life, you know... Being alive is not for the faint of heart. And that's why I am addicted to laughing gas. No, I'm kidding. Let's now let all of your, let all of your tensions out. Let all of them out. Let them out. Let them out. Let them go. Like, like see a car drive. Let your tensions go as if a car is driving away after dropping off a chocolate cake. Let your tensions go like the way you let a bird go out of your hand. Okay, and now with your next out breath, I want you to breathe out fire the way fire breathers do in Las Vegas and Milan. I know they do it in Milan. I I went to Milan once for a cookie. (laughs) Disregard my joker laugh and With your next in-breath, I want you to breathe in the goodness, the beauty that is life. We can be beautiful if you just see and feel and open yourself up to the beauty. You don't have to believe in fear. Yes, we can have our fears, but let them go. Let those fears go as if you were letting go of... um, if you were letting go of someone you had abducted for three years and you and you finally realized that they knew where she was and you had to let her go. Let her... I'm sorry, I'm shouting during the guided minute. Just let your fears go as if you were letting an abducted child go. Let your fears go. Don't believe in them. Don't believe in them. We're almost at 2023 and if we get to 2050 I'll be shocked I'll be shocked so with your next out breath I want you to breathe out all the poisonous particulates that are in your system and think about what an incredible body the human body is it resists all these diseases except the ones that kill us that's for sure but with that out breath let that all go and i want to thank everybody for another meditation Mm. thanks for joining us for another guided meditation with eddie (laughs) pepitone i'm kind of going off the rails a little bit but folks you know you're finding the freedom out here which i i love to see you know, 
I used to when I used to do the uh, I yeah. bring people on in the podcast I did with my buddy years ago to do characters, and man, it was it was so funny because some people just couldn't they couldn't get into it. They couldn't get, lose you know lose themselves in a character. And yeah, they would get self conscious, and so it's like I love seeing you do it because you're just you just go you just get loose. That's my thing, man. You know, that's yeah. Well, it's not. It's just no. That's my thing, man. It's just. Uh, <laughs> No, it became my way of working. Yeah, yeah. And and that's, you know, it's kind of combining, like, improv training that I had a lot of. Yeah. And I found improv really difficult, and I don't think I was one of the better improvisers. I would have moments. Yeah. But, like, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to improvise with the likes of my good buddy Sean Conroy and other people. Mm. But then theater train, you know, it it can meld in. Like my genre happens to be stand up. Yeah, it's it yeah. turns out, you know. And if you're looking for a chicken, that's not going to let you down. May it, let it be Stouffer's. <laughs> <laughs> Stouffer's chicken. Because we are so inhumane to these animals, you'd have no idea. And that's why we hide all of our facilities. You can't find any slaughterhouse (laughs) anywhere. And the ag-gag laws have made it that they consider people who uncover inhumane animal treatment, they consider them domestic terrorists. And that's what awaits all of us. If you let them do that, they will eventually get all of us. And that's why here at Apocalypse Soon, we have no upside because we bring you these facts. Yes, there is evil in your midst and we need to speak out about it. Don't give in to your fears. Right? That was nice. That was nice. It was a good, it was a, it was a commercial for Stouffer's <laughs> and also a warning to the nation, you know. Which, That's oh. the way Stouffer's <laughs> will sell more chickens by the way. Yeah. You know that I do all these parodies and say all these things so that corporate America can, can corporate America can get their shit together. Yeah, oh yeah. Right? Oh, someday. I dude, I I oh man, I can't what? wait for the day when, you know, say Bill Gates or somebody from one of these companies, they reach out to you. They go, you know, we've been paying attention. We've been paying attention. Uh, and we, you know, we'd love your input on some of this. Come on over. You know, come come work for uh, oh for Microsoft. God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That would I be don't great. know, man. I, I, I think... I think money, here's another thing about money. Mm-hmm. I think money will be drawn to you. I'm talking to all my fans here. Money and all the people who, yeah, I call them fans, right? People, <laughs> whatever. Are you fans? There's a lot of fans, but anyway, but people who, uh, <sighs> people who want to make money, you know, I think the biggest thing is just fucking. Doing what you love. Now, that's a big cliche, but it's like committing, maybe is a better term. Committing to what you love, you know, some kind of thing that you really want to do. Yeah. And then it'll come. The money will come eventually. Well, I find that life. After about 40 years. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe too long for some of you. I I feel like life, it can be such a slog and it can be so... (laughs) fucking miserable sometimes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that if you do anything but no something doubt, that man. you enjoy if you don't enjoy it you, you're not gonna make it you know what i mean like i don't yeah think to you'll have get the, a fucking ulcer yeah to have the know. longevity to keep doing something for as long yeah. as we have to live now you know it's <laughs> it's it's like to you know have to do it for that long you better like it you, you know? know what's wild about the end of days and we are in them mm-hmm. and i know that a lot of you don't think we are <laughs> you know, and rightfully so, if you're relating it to like the apocalyptical evangelical bullshit about the end of days. I'm not talking about. I was. Gonna those say. people can't wait for the. Do they call that the rapture? Yeah, the rapture. They can't wait <laughs> for the world to yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Which get, is get, so crazy, and I'm not saying that, and I'm not. I'm just talking about the fact that I. I think we're in extraordinary, extraordinary times, Wolf. 
Mm. Yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst news guy. Welcome to Wolf Blitzer's New Year's Eve. With who that would be funny. You know how they have like some young hip guy like Anderson Cooper uh, and Kathy Griffith before she did the Trump thing. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking oh man. Wait That's you know, I hope I hope that a lot of this stuff is saved from the T V era. You know, when people look back on this civilization. Yes. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they could look at things like CNN and it would be, you know, when, whenever, you know, I, I'm talking about time travel here. I'm talking about different mm-hmm, civilizations. Mm-hmm. I think it, there are myriad, myriad uh, civilizations and myriad flavors at Yogurt Land this week. We have butterscotch. That's right. We have chocolate swirl. What's a mm-hmm. chocolate swirl? Just look in your toilet. <laughs> I always like when I can crack you up. Yeah, I, oh, out of the blue. Yeah, look in your toilet. I love it. <laughs> no, it's a guy who goes from really trying to sell something yes, yes. to like just bringing it to the lowest yes. level shit. Yeah, yeah. I well, I do like. I I love when uh, uh, the humor is juxtaposed. From like something that, in many cases, I will be like, I yeah. think I know what he's talking about here, and then the, to look at you, to <laughs> shit, to chocolate swirl, shit. I used to tell so many shit jokes. Oh, I, I never did. I never did. Oh, I did. it was like it was like a border where I wasn't like being. I was being bad, but I wasn't being real yeah. bad. So yeah, yeah. You can tell poop jokes at a at a church. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Ever tell you something? Yeah, what? So no, I, like, you have some poop jokes? Oh, I mean, I've, I've, I've had your some. own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're not mm-hmm. like joke jokes; they're more like stories. Mm-hmm. By the way, yeah. this would be a great corporate video for a colon cancer doctor. Now you have some poop jokes <laughs> uh, for a, for a what? What are they again? I have a good uh, guy, gastroenterologist. Oh God! I have a good gastro guy. I hope he's still around. God bless him. <sighs> This goes out to my gastro guy. I'll get in as soon as I can. <laughs> Imagine that. You you can only contact people now through podcasts because of all kinds of communication breakdowns. Look, if you're my gastro guy, I don't feel well. <laughs> Please contact me somehow. If uh, my podiatrist is out there, uh, the wart is, we're still working on it. Uh, I need to come back in. <laughs> Do you want to do uh, one final, uh, yeah. one final little sketch here before we wrap it up? We're at forty-three. Oh, we're fine. Minutes. Oh, we're you, fine. You want to wrap it? Let's wrap it. You want to wrap it up? Yeah. Let's you want to wrap? You want to do a freestyle? We're gonna. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> the park is dark. The days are dark. We're in the end times. <laughs> 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 Wheezy and coffee. <laughs> Am I doing it? Am I rapping good? Daddy? No, folks. Folks, obviously, uh, we're way too white. <laughs> so, um, what? Well, yeah, we're good. So we're that good. was our little. Uh, you know, I, I think these are great. These off the cuff ones. I feel it's it feels good. It feels it's uh, you, uh, we're emotionally nude out here in the park. You know, we're you're getting a, a real interaction. Yeah. Here, you know, out in the so streets. let's let's tell everybody. You know, uh, go to EddiePepitone dot mm-hmm. com. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be touring the Northeast from November 9th through the tw- November tenth through the twenty first. I'll be. New York with Kevin on the twelfth. We'll be doing our doing apocalypse soon from New York. Yeah, the very first live podcast, three o'clock on the Saturday. Yoo-hoo! It'll be fun. It'll be. I've done time. live podcasts before. Have you? Oh yeah. Oh, oh good. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be wild. We got to figure it out. It is going to be we're wild. Do. I think there's going to be a lot of people there, which is going to yeah. be great. Hell yeah. Well, because I think it's going to be a good home crowd. Yeah. yeah I yeah, think. Yeah. I think. And who who's our guest? Joe List. Joe List. Put it on a list. Write it down twice. Joe is a really funny comedian and a great writer. Yeah. It should be really funny to hang out with Absolutely. you and Joe in New York. And then that night, 
I'm going to Poughkeepsie, and then just go to EddiePepitone.com. Mm -hmm. What about uh, what else they can do for like Patreon uh, five or twenty? Throw us a throw us a couple of shekels, and uh, we'd appreciate it. With that, you will get some uh, exclusive Pepitone, uh, uh, exclusive Pepitone stand up, and uh, you know some artwork potentially, and then we got stickers and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, in there. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, thanks so much. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we are going to be going in the studio soon. A new one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the new studio. Join us next week on Apocalypse Soon. Podcast with no upside.